What started as the hipster spec that everyone ignored has become one of the most dominant healers in the game. Holy Priest is looking pretty good in 9.1, so we're here today to give you all the information you need to set up your character for PvP. We will be breaking down talents and covenants and show you how to gear up for Season 2. Be sure to stick around because at the end we will be sharing some macros used by some of the best Holy Priests in the world. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Capped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry-level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Holy Priest gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to heal, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill cap members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. Luckily for Priests, your best race for both factions is exactly the same for Disc and Holy. For Alliance, Night Elf and Human are still your best options. Night Elf is arguably a bit more useful since having Shadow Meld gives you a well-rounded tool in PvP and even allows you to counter the newly added Shackles Trinket. Not only can it be used to avoid casts and immune CC, but it can also be used to get off really clutch drinks, which is important since mana can be an issue in longer games. There is still an argument to be made for human, however, since having an additional stun break is really nice given how common stun effects are in Arena. But with 9.1 looking like an incredibly fast meta, we recommend Night Elf for most people. For Horde, Undead remains the best race by far. Warriors and Shadow Priests continue to be popular in Season 2, so having an additional CC break is important, especially right now in a fast-paced meta. And that is pretty much it. The other races really can't compete, so if you plan on taking PvP seriously, we highly recommend going Undead for Horde. Your optimal talents remain the same in Season 2, but here's a refresher on how you should build. For your first tier, we highly suggest playing Renewed Faith in most matchups, since the 10% extra healing on targets with Renew will benefit your entire healing toolkit. The only time you would ever swap this is the rare chance you are playing against Double Shaman, in which case your Renew has a high chance to be purged, preventing you from benefiting from Renewed Faith. If that's the case, then swap over to Enlightenment. For your second tier, Angelic Feather remains your best choice. Having an on-demand movement speed increase for you and your partners is incredibly strong, especially in cases where you need to push into the enemy team for an AoE fear. Guardian Angel is by far your best choice on your third tier, as it gives you a much shorter cooldown on your primary defensive. The trick when playing with this talent is to never let your Guardian Spirit proc, making sure that you pump heals into your teammates while it is active. For the most part, Psychic Voice is your best talent on your fourth row, since having a 30 second cooldown on fear is integral to many priest comps like RMP and Jungle Cleave. You might want to consider swapping this talent to Censure when you're playing with two caster DPS like Ellie Mage, since many ranged DPS lack a stun effect for kill setups, making you the primary stunner for your team. Your next three talents never change in Arena, with Surge of Light, Benediction, and Apotheosis all being your default choices. Surge of Light is important in PvP because it gives you instant cast heals, allowing you to pump casts out without worrying about being interrupted. Benediction is nice because it synergizes well with Renewed Faith, having a chance to put Renew on targets affected by Prayer of Mending. This saves you mana while also boosting your healing output. Apotheosis is your final default pick since it is an incredibly dynamic cooldown. It resets both your Serenity and Chastise, allowing you to make both defensive saves and offensive plays. With that out of the way, let's take a look at your PvP talents for Season 2. Let's start off with a default build that you can use in almost every matchup. Greater Fade, Miracle Worker, and Cardinal Mending are all super solid picks that you should always keep as your default build. Greater Fade gives you temporary immunity to most attacks and spells with the exception of interrupts. With careful timing, you can use it to avoid CC or simply as a defensive cooldown when you're under pressure. We should note that it was slightly nerfed in 9.1 and now only lasts 3 seconds down from 4. Miracle Worker is part of your default build since it gives you more instant cast healing. In a meta dominated by heavy burst damage, having a second charge on your primary burst heals gives you an easier way to keep your partners topped while not needing to hard cast and risk getting interrupted. Cardinal Mending was redesigned in 9.1, now giving less upfront burst healing and being correctly affected by dampening. This nerf definitely hurt the talent a bit, especially going into a burst heavy season 2, but nonetheless this talent is still good as it buffs one of your primary heals. 
skills. With that in mind, there are some situational talents that can replace Cardinal Mending, the first being Holy Ward. This talent works exceptionally well in 2v2, especially into teams that do not have an offensive dispel or an easy way to remove its effect. In 3v3, this talent performs really well into many hunter comps like Jungle Cleave and Ret Hunter since it can be used along with Greater Fade to avoid stun trap setups. Greater Heal is a niche option that can also replace Cardinal Mending in 2v2. One advantage of playing this talent is that it is not affected by dampening, allowing you to deal with the higher levels of healing reduction that you see in the 2s bracket. Divine Ascension is another option that is seeing a surge in popularity due to the dominance of melee DPS. This talent can be selected to give you an additional defensive tool against cleave setups, allowing you to temporarily avoid attacks in the air. This even works well in 2v2, as some classes like Windwalker Monks and Arms Warrior do seemingly unhealable damage at higher levels of dampening. Thought Steel is your final situational talent, working really well into any team with a mage. Because it steals Polymorph for 20 seconds, this talent allows your team to remain aggressive, not having to worry about spammable peels. It can replace Cardinal Mending in both 2v2 and 3v3. Priests are pretty spoiled in PvP since their best covenant is the same for all three specs. Just like Disk and Shadow, Venthyr is by far your best choice, and that is entirely due to mind games. This ability has truly stood the test of time, remaining incredibly strong since the beginning of the expansion. With the rise in popularity of hybrid melee DPS, this talent continues to remain valuable because it is a counterplay to any form of healing, especially from hybrid DPS. Door of Shadows is also helpful in our melee dominant meta, as Holy Priest mobility can be fairly limited while getting trained. Simply put, this spell gives an additional escape tool on top of its primary function, which is to combo with Psychic Scream for kill setups. With your Covenant out of the way, it's time to pick a Soulbind, but there are two options you should swap between. Nadia is one choice, representing the more aggressive option due to having the most potency slots available in your conduit path and having the most offensive procs. Some of the key abilities on her tree include Thrill Seeker, which periodically grants you a 20% haste buff, Agent of Chaos, which causes your Door of Shadows to AoE disorient targets, giving another CC to combo with fear, Familiar Predicaments, which despite being nerfed in 9.1 is still strong due to its passive interrupt reduction, Nimble Steps, which was added in the patch, giving you an auto-proc defensive against enemy melee whenever you drop low, and finally the newly added end cap ability called Fatal Flaw, which will give you a huge versatility buff after your Euphoria from Thrill Seeker has ended. All in all, these abilities give you more opportunities to be aggressive, which is the bread and butter of many priest comps like RMP and Jungle Cleave. In situations where you want additional defenses, you might want to consider Theotar. One of the key abilities with his talent tree is Leisurely Gate, which gives you two charges on your Door of Shadows, something that is incredibly functional against melee cleaves when you anticipate you will be the kill target. His other abilities, like It's Always Tea Time and Token of Appreciation, simply give you and your team more bulkiness, all of which is useful in situations where you can't be 100% aggressive. Swapping between these soul binds is important if you want to min-max. Nadia should be your default build since its added offensive abilities complement your aggressive toolkit. However, in situations where you want more bulk, Theotar remains the better defensive pick. Now that you have an idea how to select your soul bind, let's go over the best conduits for each type. For potency, Focused Mending, Resonant Words, and Shattered Perceptions are your top three picks. Both Focused Mending and Resonant Words increase your healing throughput, while Shattered Perceptions gives you the highest possible damage with Mind Games. This arguably makes it the most important, since Mind Games is integral to Priest playstyle, regardless of spec. One possible substitute is Lasting Spirit, which can replace Focused Mending when you're playing with a hybrid DPS. Having a hybrid on your team usually means you will need to do less healing, so having a stronger defensive cooldown could be more valuable. Your endurance slot should be occupied by Light's Inspiration and the newly added Condensed Animosphere. Light's Inspiration will give you a defensive boost when you need it the most. In situations where you're getting trained and are forced to desperate prayer, this simply gives you some minor additional healing. Condensed Animosphere is really good into any team that deals AoE damage since it is usually enough to offset small cleave damage from things like dots. And finally, for Finesse Conduits, you should play with Move with Grace and Clear Mind. Overall, Finesse Conduits really don't matter too much, but having a lower cooldown on your life grip and reduced mana costs of your dispels certainly helps no matter what the matchup. Gearing has changed slightly in 9.1, including the addition of some optional pieces from Sanctum of Domination. 
All Season 2 PvP gear will now scale up to 13 eye levels anytime you're in instanced PvP, meaning your unranked conquest pieces will have a base eye level of 220 and a PvP eye level of 233. Gear can still be upgraded based on rating, up to rank 5 once you reach 2100 in any bracket. You will still need honor to upgrade every piece with weapons costing the most to upgrade. Now though, you will need to win at least one game to upgrade to the highest ranking available. For the most part, you should focus gearing primarily with conquest points, getting cash every week and then looting your vault every Tuesday. Prioritize buying your weapons the first week it is available as it will give you the power level increases. And as a reminder, your stat priority is still intellect, then versatility, haste, mastery, and crit in that order. You should base your conquest purchases based on whatever gives you the highest intellect and versatility increases, focusing on gear that has both haste and versatility. For trinkets, having a medallion is essential due to the fast paced meta where snappy reactive cooldowns are generally preferred. The only exception to this is if you're playing human, in which case you can play with the relentless trinket since you already have a CC break. Your secondary trinket choice is a bit flexible and dependent on playstyle and matchup. Shackles is a super powerful offensive option early season that performs really well into teams with limited dispels. If the enemy team has multiple dispel options, then the insignia trinket might be your best offensive choice. And finally, in matchups where you anticipate you will be trained, the emblem trinket is still strong despite its nerfs in 9.1. There is some new PvE gear you can get from Sanctum of Domination that has special sockets for new gems called Shards of Domination. These effects will be nerfed by 50% in PvP so they aren't completely necessary in Arena. If you manage to get your hands on a piece of gear with a shard socket, just make sure it has versatility on it, otherwise your Conquest PvP gear is probably better. But please don't sweat it, you won't need this new gear to be competitive. If you get it, great. If you don't, well, no worries. Of course, the most important piece of gear you will equip is your Legendary, so let's break down your options for Season 2. Your main healing Legendary is Harmonious Apparatus. This is overall your best option for raw throughput. It smooths out your healing and damage rotation by giving you cooldown reduction on your most important spells, allowing you to burst heal with Serenity or CC with Chastise more frequently in Arena. One general option for PvP is Sefus's Proclamation. Although it does not give you nearly as much throughput as Harmonious Apparatus, its CC reduction will always have value in PvP. You might want to consider crafting this for matchups where your globals are fairly limited, such as against CC heavy comps. You have two alternative legendary choices which you might want to consider crafting, with Sanshi, Return of Archbishop Benedictus, and Vault of Heavens. Sanshi is starting to see some play in Season 2 simply due to how fast the meta is, giving you another pseudo defensive cooldown to rotate through for dealing with high burst damage. Vault of Heavens is another niche pick, useful to have in your inventory in order to give you more mobility against melee cleaves. Finally, let's look at some macros which are being used by some of the best holy priests in the world. For starters, we highly recommend making a help and harm macro for your dispel. The macro we have listed here will use purify if you are targeting a friendly player, but will use dispel magic if targeting an enemy player. We also suggest making a cursor macro for your mass dispel. This will cause your MD to be cast wherever your mouse is currently located, circumventing the need to click the ground in order to use it. Focus macros are an integral part of any PvP toolkit and form the foundation for starting to min-max your development. We highly recommend making focus macros for many of your spells, including your Dispel, Shadow Word Death, Mind Control, and Mind Games. And if you want to be as efficient as possible, we suggest making an Arena 1-2-3 macro for your Chastise. This will allow you to use it on the correct target, no matter who you are currently targeting. Lastly, in the off chance you are playing Holy Ward, it is incredibly useful to have a macro to always cast it on yourself, which you can do by adding an at player command. And that wraps up our intro to Holy Priest for Shadowlands Season 2. If you're wanting to see the rest of this course, consider checking out skillcap.com slash wow, where we will be updating our class courses and arena commentaries for the next patch. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe below to stay up to date on all future uploads. As always, thanks for watching, see you soon.